Okay, thank you guys for joining us today. Today we are going to be talking about Google Sheets and how um, there are more than just spreadsheets and different things that we can do with Google Sheets besides just using it to track data, create charts and stuff like that. And then we wanted just to go over where all the buttons are for this webinar. There's the chat function. If there's a question that comes to your mind where you just want to put it out to the entire group, you can go ahead and put it in the chat. Or if you guys just want to have lovely conversations with each other, you can also do that in the chat. If there is a question that you would like Marshall or I to answer, you can go ahead and put it in the Q&A section. So right after the webinar, we'll get into the questions and answers and we'll go ahead and go through all of those questions. If you can't find the Q&A section, that's okay. You can go ahead and drop your question in the chat and we'll search through it to get those as well. And then just quickly running through our agenda for today. So um, first we're gonna talk about what is Google Sheets. We're gonna go through some of the basic controls. We're gonna then talk about um, pixel art. Then um, we're gonna get into some conditional formatting, um, merging cells and merging boxes, protecting ranges and cells and sheets, and then how we can split our text, do drop downs within Google Sheets, and then um, share what we've seen in classrooms, uh, different teachers using Sheets beyond just using it to collect data. All right, so what Google Sheets is. Google Sheets is kind of like Excel. It's a spreadsheet tool, that's what it started out as. With Google Sheets, you can share it with others, you can collaborate in real time, you can do graphing, charting, formulas, just like you can in Excel, you can build in script, but there's built-in research tools, you can import and export, but you can also do pixel art and conditional formatting. So conditional formatting, is you actually programming in the sheet that if there's a four, it's gonna be colored blue no matter where it is. Or you can tell it if the four is in row B, it'll always be blue. If there's a three in row B, it'll always be pink or orange. So that's what conditional formatting is. You guys might've seen this too when you guys were um, filling out your, your Google Sheets of when you were contacting students and stuff. Um, so I created that sheet and I set up conditional formatting that when depending on what you put for, if you were able <clears throat> to make contact, then you saw that it turned the whole line either green or yellow or something. So that was an example of conditional formatting. So how to open up a Google Sheet, how to create one. So there's a few ways that you can do this. So the first one is you can open up your drive, um, go to the new button and then click Google Sheets. You can also in your browser, you can just type in, like if you were gonna type in www.google.com, you can type in sheets.new and it'll automatically create a new sheet for you. And then you can also go to your waffle and choose um, the sheets icon to go ahead and create a new sheet. When you do that, it's gonna show you all the sheets in your drive. It's gonna kind of filter it out for you. And then you have the option to create a new sheet right within there. So when we look at a Google Sheet, the buttons are slightly different, slightly similar to all of the other products. So we're gonna skip over like the undo, the print, the zoom, and we're gonna go right to where the dollar sign and the percent sign is. All of these are format. So what these buttons do is you can actually format your numbers when they appear. So you can have your numbers format into money or a percentage. And then the next one where it's a decimal with a zero and arrows, that's you either adding or taking away decimals de and decimal points. And then if you needed different type of formatting, if you clicked on the one, two, three, this huge chart would show, and this is where you can actually pick many more options on formatting data, whether you wanted Excel, or sorry, not Excel, but Sheets to do it itself, or plain text or a number percent, maybe you wanted the date and you wanted the date to show up a specific way, or you're typing in the date and you're typing in August, but then Sheets is showing you like 08, this is where you would come to kind of fix all those formatting issues. And then the next thing that you see are just the fonts and you can change your font, you can change the size of your font, your bold, italics, strike through, and also the color of the font. So the strike through is something that's different for Sheets compared to slides and docs. So the strike through means that there's like a line literally under, like through, curve, like completely through the words or the numbers that you put here. And 
with Google Sheets, you cannot underline the actual words. So instead of underlining, there's the strike through. And then the paint can, the paint can here has a few other options. So yes, you can color in the entire cell, but from hitting the paint can, you can also get to conditional formatting, so your programming, but also alternating colors. So in, let's say you're creating something for your students and you want every single row to kind of be a different color. You want the first row to be gray, then white, then gray again. That's where you can set up alternating colors so that you don't have to actually go through and do the coloring yourself. You can actually program the sheet to do it for you. Then the next one is borders. So this is where you can give your cell a border. So right now there's really faint, faint gray lines. And to give it just a border or an emphasis, you would click these boxes and you could pick, well, do you want borders throughout your entire data sheet? Do you just want it outlined? What is the weight of the borders? Do you want different colors? Do you want the border to be black, blue? Do you want it dashed? That's where you would control all of that from there. And then the next button is merging boxes. This is my favorite button in Sheets because you're giving your students a space to actually write. You can merge the boxes or you can have your students merge the boxes. So what merging boxes means is you're selecting multiple boxes and then you click this button and five boxes becomes one really big box. So you can merge all the boxes that you have selected. You can merge all the boxes within a horizontal line or vertically or let's say that you didn't want to merge them, then you can also go to unmerge and it would undo what you did. Then we come to alignment. These alignment buttons are what you have seen in slides and docs. So you can have any text or numbers that you put in the cells. You can align them to the left, right, center. You can make them start from the bottom of the box or from the top. But then there's also something called wrapping of text. So let's say that you're writing a lot within one cell and you're stretching out the box and you're like, but my words keep going. They're not going underneath each other. That third line, they, it, you'll see like a little drop down arrow. If you click that, there's actually an option to wrap text. That way your text just goes within that one box. So as you stretch out that box to fill up the cell to make it bigger, all of your words kind of wrap itself. So it goes right under each other instead of just a really long line. And then the next button right next to that is where you can actually align your letters and your numbers to go in certain directions. So let's say that you're making a data table or you're just making a chart or you want your words to go straight up and down or sideways or diagonal or you want the words to go down. This is where you can control that. You can actually also give them specific angles as well if you didn't want to just use the preset angles that it has. And then the buttons at the end. So the one that looks kind of like a paperclip, that's just to link. Then you can add a comment, you can add a graph or a chart, you can create filters. And then the sum button, so the funky looking E is the math sum button. That is where you can get some different equations and different types of um, information if you wanted to put in equations for the sheet to actually calculate. So what, we, you know, we were talking to teachers like, what, what, what do I use it for? So what, what are some ways that I can use Google Sheets? So yes, we use it to collect data. Yes, you can do it to create graphs and stuff, but there's other things that you can use Google Sheets for. So, and we're gonna go into some of these as well, but one of them is pixel art. So you can actually have your students be creating art in a Google Sheet and that whole conditional formatting and stuff that we talked about that play, comes into play there as well. You can create, graphs, you can create data tables, um, you can do room designs. So um, as a former 4th grade teacher, um, something that I would do is, and I know my wife does this as well, is when we do missions, um, she pulls in math and she pulls in area and perimeter and stuff. And they, in sheets, they go ahead and they design like the layout of their mission and they use um, sheets and they use that and to kind of do room designs and stuff. You can visually you know, display areas and stuff. You can do fractions, you can sort data, you can actually just use sheets to write. So like we were talking about merging cells, you can use it as a writing tool. So yes, people traditionally think, okay, I'm gonna do all my writing in docs or slides, but sheets is a nice place to do some writing as well. And then you can protect sheets and ranges, which we're gonna get into in a little bit, but it's nice where you can set things up where only specific people 
or a specific person can type in a certain area or they can type in a, a particular tab in sheet. So you can play around with that and you can protect things where people can see things, but they can't type in it and you can designate it for a specific person or a specific group of people. And so Google Sheets, conditional formatting is what you would use for pixel art, merging the boxes, like Marshall said, for the writing space. So instead of you as a teacher having to open up multiple different documents to see what your student is talking about, you can have them write in the sheet right next to their data table, right next to a graph, right next to a picture that they put inside the sheet. They could merge some boxes and have a written explanation. You could also protect ranges and tabs, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty on how to do that. But the benefit for the teacher is we're opening up one document and every single student has a tab. Every single student also has a benefit because they're able to look at each other's tabs and kind of gain ideas from that point. Because for some of our students, it's really, really hard for them to just start from nothing. They need to glean ideas from somewhere. So if they're able to get inspiration from a classmate, then why not? split text into columns. Let's say that you're writing something in two columns and then you want that data to go into, you're writing something in two columns, you want the data to go into three, or you're writing something in one column, you want the data to go into two. Split text is there so you're not having to go through each individual column and divide it up yourself. You can create drop downs to use in Google Sheets. That way you give your students specific required answers that you want. That way they're not writing whatever, you're giving them actual choices. And then I put in something at the bottom, alicekeeler.com forward slash template tabs. That's something that I've used. And what that is, is it's a way where on your very first sheet in Google Sheets, you put all the names of your students. And then on the second sheet, like on the second tab, technically at the bottom, you're putting in what you want all your students to have a copy of. So it's essentially, I'm putting my master. So I put my directions, I put what I want for my students. And then I follow Alice Keeler's directions. And what happens is a tab automatically gets created for every single one of my students with their names attached to it. And it is amazing, regardless if you're elementary or secondary, all 180 something of my students now have a tab that they can see. Their name's already there. I didn't have to duplicate anything. I just did two things. I copied and pasted all my students' names, and then I just created the normal assignment like I would. So Alice Keeler, and I've linked to a lot of her stuff throughout this Google Sheet webinar, and you'll see that she has a ton of resources for us teachers. So why would you want to use conditional formatting? So the first thing we talked about is doing pixel art. So this, these two pictures on the side here, these are some examples of some pixel art that students created within Google Sheets. And these are set up where, depending on what number, like for the one on the example uh, at the bottom, depending on what number they put in a box is going to determine what color the box turns. Same thing for the one on the top. Um, so pixel art is a good way that you can take advantage of conditional formatting. You can also sort data that way. So depending on, you know, if you're uh, using sheets to um, organize your students by whether it's high, medium, and low, EL levels, Lexile levels, stuff like that. You can set up conditional formatting that if a student falls within a particular range, their cell is going to turn a particular color. Um, it's a fun way to introduce sheets to your students. So students have, um, they really have a lot of fun doing like the pixel art and stuff like that. And then it kind of um, just is a nice way to kind of introduce them to sheets. And then it incorporates math with area, fractions, and stuff like that. So whether you're doing, you know, layouts of a room, you can have them go and do a layout of their bedroom or they can create a room and then now you're having them do area, you can do fractions, you can do, you can pull in math very easily when you're using conditional formatting within sheets. And so now we're going to get into the how. So how to actually make conditional formatting happen is you'll want to click on format and then conditional formatting. And then you're going to just select the range of cells that you want this formatting to apply to. So you could select your entire sheet or you could just select a column or a row. Then you're gonna change where you're gonna be able to change to text is exactly. That way, no matter what the student types in, 
that if they type in exactly the letter A, that that cell is going to change to whatever color you want. And then you can change the fill and the text color. And something that I do is I change the fill and the text color to make it look like the letter that they wrote went away, but really it just camouflages into the background. So if they were just to write the letter A in a box, that entire cell would turn red, for example. Well, it would be red with a black letter A. And I don't want the letter A to show up, so then I make the color of the font for A match the background. That way it looks like it disappeared, but really I'm just camouflaging it into the formatting of the background. So now we're gonna move on to why would we want to merge boxes together? Why would we wanna merge cells? So like we've talked about before, it's a nice way to give students a space to write. So <clears throat> if you go through and like, let's say you're gonna do, you're gonna combine things, you're gonna do pixel art on one side of the sheet, but then you want them to write about their art that they created, or if they're doing a, an area model of a, of a room and you want them to talk about it on the side, instead of them just typing in a little cell and having to figure out how that all works, you can go through, highlight a bunch of cells, merge them all together, and now they have one big area to write in. Um, it's nice to be able to insert pictures too. So you can insert pictures into cells, but then it kind of gets a little messy if it's just one little single cell. So you can merge boxes together and then it gives you a nice kind of big canvas to insert a picture in. And then it, it's better for formatting. So if you are wanting to format text or images or stuff like that, it makes it nicer to, um, to format those things. So to do that, all you have to do is highlight the cells that you want to merge together. And then you're going to, at the top um, toolbar, you're gonna select that merge button. It's gonna be like the two arrows pointing at each other. And then you can choose, am I merging all of these? Am I merging horizontally? Am I merging vertically? So depending on how you want your text to go or what kind of area you're using, you're gonna um, determine how you're gonna merge these. And then if you merge something and you're like, oops, I don't wanna merge that together, highlight it all again, and then you would just choose the unmerge button and it'll put everything back to how it was before you merged it. And now we're gonna get into like why protect ranges and tabs and then how could you use this with students? So the reason why that we want to protect a range or a tab or even a cell is so that no one can change those directions or data. Our students love to delete things, especially the directions, and then they want to come up to us a hundred times and say, what do we do? When we went over it, we printed it for them, we pointed it out. So in Sheets, it's nice to where you can protect it so that they can't delete it, they can't backspace it, they can't change the color, they literally cannot touch it. You can also control who has access. So let's say that within your PLC, you're all putting in your data. I put all my test data in column A, and my other teachers within my PLC team are putting their data in column B, C, D. You can control who has access to that sheet with all the data in it, and you can control who has access to those rows as well, who can even edit those specific squares. And how you could use this with your students is each student can technically create their own sheet in a document. So instead of you doing it, you can just share one sheet and have all of the students hit add on the bottom and create their own, just like you would do in a Google slide where all the students add in a slide and they put their name in the speaker notes and they all have their specific Google slide. You can do the same thing within a Google sheet. So the students create a new one on the bottom, they put their name. And then when the students say, oh, well, someone took mine, it's okay, they're free. They can hit the plus button again and recreate it. This also lends itself really well to collaboration. The directions stay put. You can have class data very, very easily. So something that we do as teachers through all grade levels that I've seen is every single teacher loves to take class data. And then in secondary level, we like to look at class data between periods. So instead of us writing everything on the whiteboard or on different big, huge sheets of poster paper, we can actually write it all in a Google Sheet and the students can actually input their own data because we can protect it. So we can protect certain things by the end of the day. That way, only certain class periods are putting their data in specific spots. Okay, so how would you do this? So this is gonna show a little video on the side here, kind of walking you through how to do it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click either on a tab or you're gonna right click on the highlighted cells that you have, the areas that you want to protect. And then you're gonna click protect. And then you're going to, on. you'll see on the side there, you can choose 
um, set permission. So you can decide who has access to type in that, whether it's just you, whether it's, you know, if you have a, a, a tab for a specific person, then you would want to go down to custom. You would want to add the people that can actually type in that section and then you're going to click apply. So if you had like a tab for your directions, obviously you want to protect it where you're the only one that's allowed to type in there. But then if each student has their own tab, you can set it where that person and you maybe are the only ones that have access to type in that tab, or maybe you want them to work collaboratively in groups. So you're going to add those specific um, people to that tab. So then they are able to type in that tab, but nobody else is able to type in it, but everyone else can see it so they can kind of learn from each other and those types of things. So we have the video here that's kind of walking you through it. And then we also have um, links to directions on how to, how to perform this. And then split text uh, into different columns. So this I feel like is really great for us teachers. Let's say that we're just typing in student's name or we're copying and pasting because that's most of the time what we do. So we copy and paste our students data into a Google Sheet and everything goes into column A. And we wanted their first name and their last name split in different columns or we wanted their first name and the favorite color or whatever it is that they were filling out in the Google form or anything like that. We wanted it split. So what we would do is we would highlight the entire column. We would go to data and then we would go down to split text to columns and it would automatically do it. But you can actually tell the computer, well, what do you want it to recognize the split? So if you have a comma there, you can tell it to recognize the comma. If you have a semicolon, you can tell it to recognize a semicolon. If you have nothing, you can tell it to recognize a space. So it's really, really nice in the sense for us teachers that it makes our life a little easier. That way we're not having to go through and rewrite everything ourselves. Yes, I, I'm guilty at saying that I used to do this and then I stumbled upon this and I was just like, oh my gosh, I've, I wish I would have known that like, you know, years before I saved myself a bunch of time. So now we're going to get into drop downs. Why would you want to use drop downs in Google Sheets? Well, it's giving them, you can set it up where you give students specific answers. So you could be typing out questions on your sheet and you want a specific answer from them. So you can give them choices, but you want them to choose those specific choices. Um, it, it allows you to easily fill in sheets. So if they are, you know, filling out a table that you've created in your sheet and the choice that you want them to choose, you put in that drop down, and then they only choose from those specific options. So how to do this is you're gonna highlight the cells and then you're going to right click on them and you're gonna select data validation. From there, you're going to select list of items and then you're gonna type down, uh, you're gonna type in the items in the drop down section and you're gonna separate them by commas. So then after you click save, you'll see in the cell, there's gonna be a little arrow you click on that arrow, it's going to select um, the drop down for you. And this is a great way to teach students how to create a data table. Mm -hmm. I know something in seventh and eighth grade is the students have no idea how to create a data table or what goes where. So by using the drop down function in sheets, you can give them choices and they have to kind of figure it out within the group or within themselves. Okay, well, what's going to go on the left hand side? What's going to go on the top? What am I going to do? What's my X? What's my Y? And so you're giving them all these choices and you're narrowing it down for them. That way later on throughout the year, you can slowly take away those scaffolds as you're slowly teaching them throughout how exactly it is that you make a graph, how you make a data table. And then it can become to a point where they are now creating a data table all by themselves. So here are some examples that um, we wanted to throw in here, some things that we've seen uh, used in classrooms with uh, students using Google Sheets. So the first one is that they were um, creating a room using area. So they were given some specific directions. Those directions were protected, so the students could not uh, type on them. And then they had to use the Google Sheet and they, the teacher inputted some images there. They had to set the room to a specific size. They had to then make sure all the furniture fit in the room. Um, then another thing was the top one is Valentine's Day heart. So they created some pixel art around um, Valentine's Day, creating a heart. And then they had to write a story about their Valentine and that kind of tan, beige box is a merged box. So they merged all those cells together. And then that gives the students space to write. 
And then um, the last one down here is pixel art where they're using the alphabet to make a diagram and then they're gonna use that space to write as well. And so these are just some examples that we've seen of teachers like doing out of the box things with Google Sheets. But I know that there was a PE teacher that Marshall was telling me about oh, whose yep. students were doing Google Sheets. And then Marshall can explain it because he saw it, but it was, it's amazing. And I've seen students at the junior high school doing pixel art and writing about it. I've seen students at Cunningham where the teacher and me, we created a math, a bunch of math problems on Google Sheets. And as the students solved the math problems, each box changed a specific color depending on what the answer was. And when they were done, they created a flower. So they had a stem and leaves and a whole flower. And if the flower wasn't correct or there was a black spot in the flower that shouldn't have been there, then they know that they got the problem wrong in that box. And so they went back and tried to figure it out. So there's so much that you can do to make a normal worksheet or a normal math set or a normal problems just a little more exciting. And then Marshall, could you explain what you saw uh, with the PE class? Yeah, so I went to uh, Dutcher earlier this year and um, I visited a PE class and what they were doing was they were tracking their mile times. And so the teacher had them sit down, they pulled out their Chromebooks, they pulled up their sheet that they've been working on throughout the year. And then they had certain, um, sections that they had to fill out for every time they ran the mile. And then they put in their, like the teacher gave them, he kept track of their like lap times. So they inputted their lap times and then on the right, it automatically updated and it gave them like their average pace and their average mile time and their difference between their first mile and their second mile and like how they've improved. And so he set that all up with different conditional formattings and whatnot, but it was cool for, the students to see is as they're putting in their data, they instantly get to see, they get that immediate feedback of how they're doing. Are they improving? Is there certain areas that they're not improving on? Like I was talking to one kid and he noticed that his first lap time is really fast, but as he goes, like his, his lap times get a little slower. So he, you know, kind of made the realization of maybe I don't need to come out like out the gun, like very fast. Like I need to kind of pace myself. So it was cool just to see them, and it was like five minutes, they just inputted their data, they were able to look at the tables, and then they moved on to the activity that they were working on for the day. So we just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. Um, tomorrow, we are going to be, that should say Friday, um, May 1st, and um, it is, we're going to be going over uh, collaborative docs. So we're gonna talk about ways that we can use docs, slides, Google Drawings, Google Sheets, and use it in a collaborative, creative way and um, kind of enhance that communication, critical thinking, creativity, kind of hitting on the four C's. So make sure that you can um, join us tomorrow where we're gonna talk about collaborative docs and we hope you guys have a great day and we will now move into the Q&A time of our webinar. And so, okay. So in the chat, I see that there was one question, but then I see that we answered the question as we were talking. Um, the question just says like on a sheet, do you create a key so students know or give separate instructions for the pixel art? And the answer that we had given in the presentation during the explanation was just, the teacher just creates merged boxes and just writes in the directions. Yep. So there's no questions in the Q&A section. So does anybody have any questions of anything that we've gone over today? Or did we just totally overwhelm everybody and nobody has any questions? All right, well, if no one has anything, then we will bid you guys adieu and we will see you tomorrow, Friday. Friday, I changed Friday. the date already on, <laughs> on the slide. All right, well, again, if you guys have any questions that you can think of after this, feel free to email us. We're here to help, we're here to support, and we hope you guys have a great day, and we will see you soon.